Hello everyone, today I am going to present my first lecture on Introduction to Crop Growth Simulation Modeling. As you know, the simulation modeling solves real world problems and uh, more safely and efficiently. And it provides an important methods of analysis which is really verified and communicated and understood. Across the industry, uh, many disciplines, simulation modeling provides valuable uh, solutions by giving clear lights or insights into complex systems. It is said that the simulation model is said to have valid if it resembles the problem that was designed and to simulate and that is if the data it produces resembles the behavior of the real world sim simulation, uh, systems it simulates. So in this particular lecture, um, you get to know the very basics of crop simulation modeling. So I'm going to the next slide. What is the simulation model? As you know, a simulation model has three different parts. You can see the entities. Entities could be the machine, materials, people, plants, etc. Because here I have deliberately written plant because we are dealing, going to deal with the extra systems. Then the activities that the processes are transferring of photosynthesis that is from plant growth from uh, very basic from emergence to or the harvesting, then description of the logic governing its activities. So a simulation model has all these three characteristics. And why we need a simulation model? As you know, a simulation models are meant to answer questions which the scientists have in a dynamic, quantitative, and often in a pictorial way. So of course, simulation modeling is a key approach currently used to study the effect of climate change on natural resource management or the effect of climate change on crops and crop based systems, how the yield and all those things have been governed or affected by positively or negatively by the impact of those temperature, rainfall, carbon dioxide concentrations uh, on this, uh, these factors on crops and crop systems. So uh, why we need a simulation model or why modeling is required because to assimilate knowledge gained from field experiments and to provide a structure that promotes interdisciplinary collaborations and because modeling is not about or the crop growth simulation modeling is not about simply a particular discipline it is a multidisciplinary interdisciplinary collaboration needed because plant experiences different uh, factors during its growth and it, it could be in a different disciplines uh, maybe agronomy, soil science, crop physiology etc. To promote the use of system analysis for solving problems because the, it is a decision support system it's, uh, it helps in solving problems and to offer dynamic quantitative tools for analyzing complexity of a cropping system. So the um, before we move forward, then definitely we should know what the system is. System, because we are dealing with the very basics of crop simulation modeling or simulation modeling. So system is a simplified representation of reality. I Means system is a common word often used loose meaning. Whereas in real world, a system may seem at times an endless series of connected elements. So having a specified boundaries and predetermined time characteristics. So models including simulation models only consist of carefully chosen component of a system and a system is simplification of a reality as I mentioned and that system is limited is a limited part of a reality that contains interrelated elements. So, so what is model then? Model is a simplified description of a mathematical representation of a system to assist the calculations and predictions. So model is simplified representation of a system. Here we refer to dynamic simulation models at each, at each time step, the status of the system changes. So model what it does, it expressed as a computer program that can be designed or repeatedly run several times for computing several design mathematical and statistical expressions or equations governing crop growth environment relations given appropriate input data. So then what are the, what are the characteristics of models? So you know that model is not the complete description of the real system, it's part of the system. 
and models built on assumptions of course there are certain assumptions while building models we took we take some assumptions and model simplicity versus model accuracy so usually the more simpler the model more accuracy and the predictability is more and if more complex just like the systems of dynamic simulation models that we use in agriculture so in that case more complex the model the predictability decreases i have no one best model for all circumstances that we cannot claim that this model is best for all circumstances certain models that are available in the world they work wonderfully for certain uh, circumstances and other circumstances they give uh, really bad predictions so it's not about computers because there are certain other things that involve in modeling too <clears throat> so friends then what is modeling modeling is based on the assumption that any given process can be expressed in a formal mathematical statement or set of statements so this is what actually modeling is all about and what is simulation simulation is the process of building models and analyzing the system or a simulation simply is the execution of a model that this requires the further definition of initial conditions of the system under considerations and specified values of parameters so if we move to the simple definition of a model the definition of model is simplified representation of a real system or process that i mentioned earlier then what are those different types of models so models can be pictorial you can represent a model in picture form it can be conceptual you can develop your own concept of a model and it can be physical just a clay structure it can be physical model clay structure all those things and most important is the mathematical models so that's what actually mathematics is in uh, application that's its application in biological systems that we use mathematical application in agriculture so what is that then definition of a mathematical model then what is a mathematical model so mathematical model it represents a real system in a mathematical form so one or more equations and physical relationship of a natural phenomenon what happens in nature by means of a mathematical equation so if we look at the type of mathematical models which is very important actually because what what actually we are going to deal with so it can be mechanistic or process based models and empirical this mechanistic model what you are after growth simulation models are all about then next is the statics and dynamics that means in static model uh, is one containing all the calculation necessary to present the relationship between respiration and growth derived from knowledge of the underlying biochemical processes for example uh, a model is used to calculate light distribution over leaves based on the knowledge of canopy architecture leaf properties solar positions and so on such such static models are often component of dynamic models so static models where no time factor is involved and in dynamic model time is a factor and dynamic models they describe the way in which the system changes so static model is the so so this is about uh, different types of model next is the discrete and continuous in discrete model time is an integer the uh, 1 2 3 and versus time as a real value is 1.1 1 2.5 1.3 1.4 1 something like that so the next type of model can be deterministic and stochastic and in deterministic models there is no element of randomness or probability but why whereas in stochastic stochastic model time the element of probability is there so coming to the mathematical model because as you know the use of mathematics in biology is very much important in this modeling activities so what it does it helps us to understand predict and control a system so this is the use of mathematical models then identification of areas of deficient knowledge it is less experimentation by trial and error it answers various what if scenarios what if what 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 if and add values to the experiments encourage collaboration among researchers from various disciplines as you know if you look at this crop growth simulation model it is a multidisciplinary approach so we need because the plant experience or the crop experience during its growth with soil and plant that means it interacts with soil for nutrients it interacts with the atmosphere for 
you know photosynthesis solar radiation all those things so it is soil plant atmospheric continuum this pack so you need multidisciplinary approaches for this where all the disciplines of agriculture like crop physiology agronomy soil science agrophysics agrometallurgy these these are there are all the disciplines they are actually required that's why it is is a multidisciplinary approach next is you know uh, the mechanistic or process met models because that's what actually model we are dealing in our agriculture systems <coughs> So models are used to explain hypotheses related to physiological processes such as photosynthesis and respiration to the behavior of whole plant such as grain in weight of a plant. So coming to the empirical model, or this empirical model is simply curve shading procedures, and what it does, it quantifies in a few parameters or a series of measurements made in plants. It can be logistic. Crop growth rate, uh, crop logistic curve, the crop growth rate, Gompers equation. So, it cannot simply, uh, it cannot imply causality, cause and effect relations because it doesn't explain why, why that such thing happened, why there was increase in certain parameters, or decrease in certain parameters. But it, it gives you there is a trend, this is increase, but the reason behind that it doesn't explain, and it describes how variables are related, but doesn't explain why that I mentioned. So these are the examples of empirical models and you know they are easier to build and as mentioned earlier they are called fitting procedures and exercise. They can be linear, logarithmic and sine, quadratic, exponential, etc, etc, what you do. But you know environmental, what are those characteristics of empirical models? Empirical models are highly environmental specific that means can only be used in conditions where it, from which they are derived and is used more limited than mechanistic models because applicable over wider range of environmental conditions cannot be. But when used in their environment in which they are built, empirical models are often very accurate more so than mechanistic models. Because we are dealing with mechanistic models, then what are those characteristics of mechanistic models? They are process-based models as and they describe and explain the process and they're more difficult to build. Whereas the empirical models, correlative or statistical models, describes but doesn't explain the processes and they are very easy to build. It's a comforting procedures. And in mechanistic models, explain not only the relationship between weather parameters and yield but also the mechanism of these models explains the relationship of influencing dependent variables. These models are based on physical selections and they are difficult to build as I mentioned earlier because we need to know which and how the factors interact with one another to produce the system processes. So we are dealing with another simulation models in agriculture. As you know, the complete models in general are a mathematical representation of a real world system. One of the main goals of crop simulation models is to estimate agricultural production as a function of weather, that's the effect of temperature, rainfall, and carbon dioxide consumers, even and slow radiation and the soil conditions and that's management practices as well as crop management practices. And these models use one or more set of differential equations and calculate rate and state variables over time, normally from planting until harvest of the crop. So this, what are those state and rate variables? State variables, as you know, state variables are the quantities such as biomass, number of individual of a species, the amount of nitrogen soil, plant and animals, and water content at a given point of time. These are all state variables. And what are those driving variables? And you know the forcing functions? They are characterized by the effect of environment on the system at its boundaries, and their values must be monitored continuously. That is macrometeorological variables like rainfall, wind velocity, temperature, radiation, or irradiation, etc. Then what are those rate variables? They are characterized by its rate of change at a certain instant as a result of specific processes. These variables represents flow of materials from state variable that is between vegetative biomass because I already mentioned that the state variable is the how much biomass is producing in time. 
but the rate of change of those biomass over a period of time, the rate variables, they are calculated from the state and driving variables according to the rules based on the knowledge of physical, chemical and biological processes involved. So what do you do exactly in modeling? So can I tell you the modeling methodology, what do you do in modeling? So this is an example. This is the plant. If I ask you, could you please tell me what are the number of leaves in this plant? So the most accurate method probably will be count, manually count each and every leaf and um, say that a thousand leaves or 1500 leaves in the plant. But what you do, the alternate method or uh, this method, you know, is problem tedious and time consuming, but the alternate method could be, you know, count the number of leaves for branches, count the number of branches, then average number of branches, average uh, number of leaves per uh, branch multiplied by the total of branches will give you the uh, number of leaves per plants. So this is what I'll actually the alternate method is. If the number of leaves per branch 150 and total number of branches 100, so total you got 1500 leaves. And this 1500 leaves actually what we do in modeling, but actual method could be 1510 or 1400 um, um uh, 1490 something like uh, 15,000 sorry this is 15,000 so this could be 15,000 leaves per plant by this method that what you did modeling in reality it could be 15,000 10 15 50 or maybe 14,999 this is what actually you do in modeling so modeling is um, you know um, simplifying the whole complex uh, system the, uh, the processes uh, through user computer simulation models so uh, this is the first um, lecture of my series and thank you uh, for your patience and uh, thank you for listening to me. So thank you very much. I uh, will go to go uh, get back to the new presentation soon. Thank you.